It's hard to believe it's that time that producers are going to be planning for dual purpose wheat grazing, but Paul, there's, there's probably going to be some challenges for dual purpose this season. Yeah, um, that's exactly right. We've got a, a tremendous uh, insect pressure. There's a lot of grasshoppers. We've had lots and lots of generations of army worms, it seems like, this year. So the fall army worms is going to be a, a very big issue. And uh, when we're looking at planting wheat, if we, if we get started, you know, the 1st of September for a graze out wheat, you know, we can expect about 2,000 pounds of fall, fall forage production. When we look at our ideal time for dual purpose wheat, we're looking at mid-September between you know, the 10th and the 15th of, of September, and, and that'll cut back our fall forage yield by about uh, 25%. Uh, actually, for every day after the 1st of September, you delay your planting, it's gonna cost you about 35 pounds of fall forage production. So that's, that's not a tremendous loss. You know, 1,500 pounds of fall forage production is really you know, it's acceptable. We've got a lot of producers that have decided to delay until that mid-September time frame uh, because of all the insect pressure that we're going to have. And there's also been some talk about shortages of uh, uh, materials we use to control the, the army worms. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, problems associated with that that's going to cut back on our fall forage production at a time whenever grain prices are going up and, and are, are fairly expensive. There's been areas where Army worms and grasshoppers have really severely impacted yields uh, in Sudan um, and sorghums and as well as Bermuda grass and crabgrass. So, um, you know, there's been, you know, whenever we get those really big, uh, nearly mature army worms and at high populations, you'll go check a hay field and it looks fine, or almost ready to cut, and then you go back out and you know what happened to my hay crop it's all gone and those army worms can really consume a lot of that forage that you're trying to put up for hay really quickly so you know there has been a lot of fields in Oklahoma that have been impacted by those pests what are some other options that producers have you know going getting closer into the late fall early winter types uh, situation as an emergency forage crop um, we've had a lot of luck uh, good luck planting oats for some early fall, uh, early winter pasture. It freezes out if it gets really cold into December and January, uh, but it will fill that gap. Other options that should be considered would be looking at triticale, which is a hybrid between wheat and rye, or just regular cereal rye. If we're looking at fall product, forage production only, um, triticale and, and uh, Cereal rye are, are two very good uh, pro forage producers because they grow at so much colder temperatures and so much more forage production than wheat. So it just seems like, you know, the takeaway from this, there's a lot of things that producers need to consider in these next, and really in these next just few weeks. Yes, there's a lot of give and take on ideal planting time for wheat and other cool season annuals to get the fall forage production that we're going to need if we're short on hay or to take care of some uh, grain supplementation if we don't want to buy expensive supplements. And, and then, you know, we're, your give and take is, you know, how do we control the, the pests and what timing for those pests. So there's, there's a lot that goes into the planning, uh, having everything ready and, and doing the best management you can to get as much forage production as you can, get your fertilizer right. Uh, you know, timing is only part of the puzzle. Uh, so, we, you know, if we get our fertility right, seeding depth, quality seed, there's a lot that can be, that can go in and, and just advanced planning will really help you in that. Yeah, and we'll check back in with you to see how the situation's unfolding, Paul. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Paul. Paul Beck, Extension Beef Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.